As has been widely publicized, Benjamin Netanyahu has stated that he has come to the United States to speak to Congress not merely as the Prime Minister of Israel, but also, and I quote, as an emissary of the entire Jewish people. This statement of his has been strongly repudiated by so many Jews, ranging from all the ultra-Orthodox all the way to the secular liberal, for many different reasons. What is the story here? Does Benjamin Netanyahu in fact represent all the world's Jewry? Of course he doesn't represent the world's Jewry. Benjamin Netanyahu is an elected leader. He's a head of state of a foreign country. Uh, I'm an American citizen. I'm a citizen of the United States of America and I'm a practicing Jew. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is neither. Uh, how in the world would he represent me? My family is from Poland. They've been there 500 years. Um, I, they're, they're, how in the world would Netanyahu come to represent to be my emissary? I didn't elect him. I didn't ask him to represent me. Neither did the other Jews in the country. So the simple answer is no. It, it, it's an absurd claim he makes. Hmm. And it's, it's unprecedented that a political leader of a foreign country should get up and very publicly tell the world that he speaks for members of a specific religion who are citizens of other countries. It's even more bizarre in this case, given that Mr. Netanyahu is not a practicing Jew whatsoever. Why then would Mr. Netanyahu claim that he represents the Jews? What's his endgame? Right. Well, this is a Zionist thing, and the Zionists from the beginning of their movement have claimed to represent uh, the Jewish people to speak in their name. It started with Theodore Herzl, who actually claimed a legal right to speak in the name of the world's Jews and to represent them. He, he invoked some Roman law uh, called uh, negatorium gestio, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, which means basically that if uh, you're not here, if you're absent I could, and you need something, I could represent you, I could litigate for you, and I could manage your property in your absence. Uh, you don't need to give me permission, I could speak for you. So Herzl came up with this idea that therefore legally the Jews have nobody to speak for them and of course he, has, he knows what's best for them and therefore he has a right to represent them to all the nations of the world. There are several motives for this. First, uh, Zionism would not get off the ground unless it speaks for the entire Jewish people. Uh, Zionism, the Zionists consider Zionism what they call the national liberation movement of the Jewish people. They said that okay, this Jewish nation all around the world, we, and, and they spoke in the name of the we, we want a country, we want this land. Now, who says that's true? I, I, so in order for them to get that claim off the ground, in order for them to communicate that, they, they had to find a way to claim that they represent all the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. uh, Herzl wanted to leverage uh, the 2,000-year-old the, the, uh, Jewish uh, desire for the Messiah. In order for them to get Zionism off the ground, they, they didn't want to just be a group of people that, that wanted a land. They wanted to be the Jewish people, the 2,000-year-old Jewish people. Now, nowadays, the, um, the claim that the Zionists represent the Jews invariably uh, comes for one of two reasons. First, you'll, you'll find lots of times that this claim that the Zionists represent the Jewish people comes in a speech where somewhere else nested within the speech is um, a, a reminder of the Holocaust, how terrible the Holocaust was and how much the Jews suffered. The reason they do this is because they want to garner sympathy for Israel and for the Zionists and uh, by mentioning the Holocaust and by claiming that they are the Jewish people or the representatives thereof, what they're saying is, okay, all the guilt that you feel for the Holocaust, the Gentiles, all the sympathy that you have for the Jews for the, for the Holocaust is not real, should not really be directed at all the Jews all over the world. It should be directed towards Israel. So we have rights as, as people who were ignored by the world during the Holocaust. We have um, a right to, to be upset, we have a right to be angry, and, and all the sympathy, that uh, a compensation that you want to provide for the Jewish people uh, because you feel guilty, provide it to Israel. That's first. So you'll always find, always, you'll very, very often find the claim that they represent the Jewish people in conjunction with, with uh, material about the Holocaust. They usually come hand in hand. The second thing, and the second reason why the Zionists uh, claim to speak in the name of Jewish people, it, it's sort of a veiled threat. You'll find this when uh, one of the Zionists, uh, one Zionist representative, 
get into some uh, altercation with a with a foreign um, representative, a foreign head of state, let's say, let's say the president, let's say Obama. So what, what they're saying is, um, Mr. President of the United States, you should know that I'm not just a foreign emissary. I'm the emissary of the Jewish people, meaning that there are several million people in your country that won't side with you, they'll side with me. Uh, for, for example, Naftali Bennett wrote on his website that any insult to Benjamin Netanyahu in context he was talking about the president is an insult to all the Jews all over the world. Reason being is because Netanyahu is not merely the prime minister of Israel, he's the, this is what he said, the leader of Jews all over the world. Which means he's trying to uh, drive a wedge between us and our country and he's trying to send a message to all the countries that the Jews live in that, okay, we got people in your country that will be on our side. So it's kind of like a veiled threat. So, so Zionists want to claim that they represent the Jewish people for those two reasons. Number one, uh, you, you'll have to, you, you'll have to you, you should identify places where they talk about the Holocaust in, in the same neighborhood, like in, in the same paragraph or in the same speech as claiming that they represent the Jewish people. And that's to garner sympathy. Um, and, and number two, uh, to send out the message, quote unquote, uh, that we got people, we got people um, behind the scenes, we got people in your country that are going to be on our side. Mm. It's incredible. And, you know, from a political standpoint, uh, Mr. Netanyahu coming to the United States recently hasn't been a very good idea. It hasn't really worked out for him. He's been attacked not only by Jews, but also by representatives in the Congress and in the Senate. I don't know if you've heard, but Abe Foxman of the ADL recently uh, was very against the idea of Mr. Netanyahu coming to the United States against the president's wishes. Uh, a recent Gallup poll shows clearly that his, favor his favorable rating in the United States has gone down from 45% to somewhere in the mid-30s. So was it just the political issues that Mr. Netanyahu created that is causing such outrage? Or is there something else about his claiming to represent the world Jewry that is causing the problem here? No, the, the, the outrage is because the statements of Netanyahu were both defamatory and dangerous to the Jewish people. They're defamatory because um, we, he's not our emissary. We're citizens of the United States, and, and both as Jews and Americans, we're, we're loyal to our country, we're loyal to the United States of America. Now, it doesn't matter if somebody um, agrees or disagrees with the president's foreign policy. It doesn't matter if, if somebody's a Republican or a Democrat, uh, Americans are allowed to have any opinion they want. But none of this means that Netanyahu is our emissary. Um, none of this means that, that we're his uh, constituents. The, the claim that the Jewish people are loyal to a foreign power is a terribly defamatory thing. Uh, we're not loyal to a foreign power. Netanyahu claiming that would be no different than, let's say, um, the, the president of Bulgaria claiming that all the Jews are, are loyal to the Bulgarian government. Um, but besides uh, defamatory, it's also very dangerous because he's, he's, feeding, uh, he's feeding fuel uh, into the flames of anti-Semitism. Now, Netanyahu, uh, he's going back to Israel to try to get elected, and he's leaving us with his baggage. Nobody's going to claim that Netanyahu is, a, is, a, is part of a fifth column in Israel. He's leaving us, and he's, he's, he's leaving us to be like human shields for the, the anti-Semitic bullets. We should take the bullets of anti-Semitism that he left over here for whatever, whatever his agenda is. Uh, we, we, need to, we need to say, no, we're not taking your, we're not going to be your human shields. Uh, and no, we're not going to buy into this, this absurdity. We're not going to cooperate with, with your false claim that you represent us. You don't. Hmm. Uh, finally, one last question. What is it that we can do? You know, since the beginning of the Zionist movement, pretty much every major rabbi has spoken out very vociferously against it. The Zionist machine is huge, though, as we all know. It's basically a, a, almost like a ubiquitous apparatus that has the strength, the willpower, the, the, the money. What can we do to combat it? Well, first, uh, Netanyahu and the Zionists may have a lot of money, uh, 
They may have a lot of power, and they might have a lot of influence. But we're the Jewish nation. We have God on our side. The same God that protected us from the Persians in the days of Mordechai and Esther, the same God that protected us from the Romans, that protected us from extinction uh, for the last uh, 2,000 years in exile, will protect us from the Zionists as well. Um, in other words, Netanyahu and the Zionists, with all their influence, they're trying to do to the Jewish people uh, harm. They're trying to uh, feed anti-Semitism for their own agenda. But the Jewish people have survived, and they will continue to survive. We need to focus on ourselves. Uh, God wants us to be better people. God wants us to be loyal citizens of our country. Uh, God wants us to, to focus on our own uh, spiritual and religious and, and um, moral growth. And then uh, he, he has a way of taking care of things. Uh, those who are in the right have a way uh, of uh, coming out on top. But besides that, uh, what we need to do is, is quite simple. Imagine, imagine if uh, the king of Bulgaria would come to America and say, you know what, I represent all the Jews. What's the first thing that would happen? Well, all the Jews would like raise their voices, scream their lungs out and say, what is this guy, crazy? He doesn't represent us. Well, what connection do we have with him? Um, we, we, we should do the same thing. We have an ignorance problem. Israel is involved in, Israel propagates tremendous amount of propaganda uh, because they want people to think that the Jews all over the world are uh, represented by Israel. And of course they're not. Um, it's a false representation. It's identity theft. It's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just a false, it's a false claim. So that's what we need to do. We need to tell people, uh, if you have a voice, if you, you have the ear of the public, tell the public. If you have the ear of your co-workers, tell your co-workers. Um, whatever you can do, just educate the, the, the people and explain to them that no, Israel is Israel, and the Jewish people are the Jewish people. Judaism is a religion. Israel is a political entity. Um, the Jewish people, we have all sorts of ethnic uh, components in the, the Jewish nation. We're a religion. Uh, we're American citizens. Netanyahu is not, and he just simply does not represent us. He just doesn't. He, he's, he doesn't speak for anybody except himself and those who elected him.